woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Good afternoon, everybody. Got a good crowd today. How's everybody doing? Welcome to another in our series of weekend demonstrations here at Woodcraft. Today we're going to be talking about stabilizing wood. Does anybody have any idea what stabilizing wood actually is? Why we do it? Anything like that? Wow. <laughs> you guys are in the right place today then. All right. Well, you know, a lot of times, and I'm going to pass a, uh, a sample piece of wood around here that I'd like everybody to kind of take a look at. A lot of times you'll have wood that is spalted or for one reason or another kind of punky, dry, crumbly. Everybody's seen wood like that from time to time. Well, it's stabilizing takes that wood that would otherwise be relatively useless in the shop, especially for turning, and turns it into something that's really, really um, got a lot of character to it. Um, makes it very usable, makes it very user friendly, uh, and just really nice to work with. I'm going to pass another couple pieces around for you to look at. Uh, the one that's going around right now, by the way, is a wood called Autograph Tree. It's a Hawaiian hardwood. This is Buckeye Burl, which is a domestic hardwood. One piece that is not stabilized, and another that is. Okay. So I want to pass those around so you can see the difference in those, okay? Stabilizing takes that wood, that crazy grain, that punky, crumbly wood, and by infusing a stabilizing medium, a polymer, once the chemicals have had a chance to harden, which is done under heat, now you've got a piece of wood that you can turn, cut, sand, machine, whatever you need to do with it without any trouble whatsoever, okay? So it's a very, very cool process. It's a very simple process as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this started so you can see how, how it works while we talk about a few other things. But first of all, what I'd like to introduce you to is some of the stabilizing fluid. This particular one has been dyed blue, okay? And you can see that it's very thin. It's pretty much like water, okay? What's that? It's almost purple. Yeah, purple, blue, it might be purple. Orange, red, okay? We've got some little scraps of Buckeye Burl, okay? One into each one. Now, because wood floats, we need to kind of weight that down a little bit. Keep it submerged. That's what these are for. Bolt and washers, John? Yep. Just keep that submerged in there. Top goes on the vacuum vessel. Make sure it's seated well. Okay. Thing opened up here. We turn on our vacuum pump. Now you can see what's happening here. The fluid's going to start to bubble. Okay. So what's happening is that the the vacuum is extracting the air from those blanks, from those old pieces of wood. Okay, it's sucking all the air out of those. That's what's making it bubble like this, okay? We're gonna run this until those don't bubble anymore, okay? This is the real exciting part, okay? It's kinda like watching water boil. But this is, this is what actually causes the stabilizing to take place, okay? We're pulling all of the air out of those blanks once those stop bubbling, okay, completely stop bubbling, we'll reintroduce air to the vacuum vessel, and at that point, that inrush of air is what carries that fluid way down deep into the pores and the nooks and crannies and the grain of, of these pieces of wood. 
and that's what causes it to lock it all together. Once these actually come out, and we're not going to go through the, the baking process, but once these come out, we would wrap them in aluminum foil, put them in the oven at 200 degrees for anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the size of the piece of wood. These would probably bake off in about 30 minutes because they're fairly small. Okay, but anywhere from 30, to, to 30 minutes to an hour at 200 degrees. If you're interested in doing this, do yourself a favor. Go someplace like one of the thrift stores, Goodwill, Value Village, someplace like that. Pick yourself up a little toaster oven for about five or ten dollars because you do not want to do this in the same oven that you cook your food in. Okay? Talk to Nick about that. Okay? That, oh, that's right, that was pine cones. Never mind. Big difference. Okay. So, again, we are stabilizing. You can see these are still bubbling. They're going to go for a while. Okay? So we're going to let that cook. The, the vessel that we have here, this is one that, that we actually built here in the store. Okay, it's just acrylic. Got a nice little seal around it. You know, we attach the fittings, the hose, the vacuum pump. These are all things that you can do. Woodcraft actually sells an actual machine, I guess you could call it, or a vessel. Stainless steel, comes with the tube and the cover, and a device for weighting your blanks down on the inside. Okay, So if we were doing this with this machine, this actually uses what's called a Venturi. Does everybody know what a Venturi is? Okay, a Venturi valve is a device that lets you send compressed air through it and by some mechanical device inside the, the unit, as it comes out the other side, it creates a vacuum. So we'd hit with, if we were doing it with this, we'd have our fluid or our jars, whichever way you wanted to do it. We'd have our weight mechanism down inside and a heavy acrylic lid with a nice rubber seal so that we can actually keep track of what's happening down inside. Okay? You want to be able to see it so you basically so you know when it stops bubbling. Okay? If you want, instead of using this large tub, if I can get this out of here, there's a small one that fits down inside. Okay? So you could actually put your resin in this if you wanted to, or again, use your jar. It's a small weight mechanism to fit down inside this one. Basically the same thing, just uses less fluid. Okay? So you put this whole thing down inside, drop the lid on your hose, which goes out to your Venturi, you've got your valve, and you're all set to go. Basically, whatever you have room in the pot for. Yeah. Now, now some woods, some woods are not well suited to being stabilized. Okay. Woods that are woods that are very hard, woods that, that are very dense and have a really tight grain, don't take well to stabilizing because there's very little, very little internal area for that fluid to go into. Okay, that's why that's why woods like this work really really well. That's why woods that are punky and like this, that's why these stabilize very well is because. You know, it's got this coarse, open texture to it. So there's a lot of, a lot of pores for the fluid to get down into. Okay. Um, so this has to be covered by the fluid. Yes, it has to be submerged in the fluid. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if you wanted, you know, if you wanted to stabilize a large piece of wood, you'd need quite a bit of fluid. Okay. Now, another thing to keep in mind: the larger the piece of wood you're still going to get penetration of the fluid but it, I mean it can only go just so deep so the further you get towards the center of that larger piece of wood the less stabilized it's going to be okay and in the case of color the less color penetration you're going to have into that large piece of wood okay so just a couple things to keep in mind a big block like what you have in your bag there 
probably wouldn't be real suited. Yeah, especially that particular wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the the resin itself. Again, this is this is the blue. That is purple. You're right. Okay, so the resin itself is actually clear in color until you add a dye to it. You can add the dyes, and they are, by the way, they are a powder. Okay, not a liquid, it's a powder. You add it at the rate of about a quarter teaspoon per cup, or per quart, I'm sorry, per quart. Now you can adjust that amount up and down depending on the intensity of the color that you're looking for. Okay. Um, the resin is a two-part material. There's a resin and what they call a catalyst. Now, when you buy the package, they're obviously they're separate. Okay, you have the resin, you have the catalyst in a separate package. Okay, you have to mix the two together. Until you mix it, it has a shelf life of about three years. Okay, once you combine the resin and the catalyst, you'll have a shelf life of about three months. The packaging actually says three plus months. I don't know what plus means. It means a little more than, but I don't know how much more than three months. So I would count on getting about three months worth of shelf life. Okay? What's that? Yes, you can. No, that's absolutely correct. Yeah. Yeah. These have been used several times. Now, what will happen, of course, is that the wood's going to absorb some of that fluid. And so each time you use it, you'll have a little bit less, you know, but you just replenish it as you go, okay? And so um, the resin has a good shelf life, okay? And uh, yes? It's made specifically for this, for this resin. Same company makes it, yeah. No, no. Um, I think that the best way to buy the product is in the gallon kit because the, the, the catalyst that you get with the gallon jug is in four packages. So you could actually decant from your gallon jug one quart and then mix your, your packet of catalyst into that, okay? Exactly, yes. So now, because we've done that, you know, you still have three-fourths of a gallon and three packets of catalyst, so you maintain the, sh the longer shelf life, okay? Um, of course, you can buy just a quart. Obviously, we have it both ways. You can buy just a quart, not a problem at all, okay? But I think the best way, especially those of you that are looking for a bargain, the gallon size is a better way to go. So, how are we doing down here? Isn't that amazing? Are you all just as excited as I'll get out watching those bubbles? Oh, come on, you guys. Contain your enthusiasm. <laughs> What's that? Put it to music. Put it to music. Oh, okay. Trust me, you don't want me to put it to music. Okay.